Hello and welcome! I'm Jim with Working With Miniatures and today we're going to be painting Townsfolk from the Pathfinder Battles Deep Cuts line by WizKids. We'll be using Army Painter Speed Paints, paints from their skin tone set, and some of their basic acrylics. Let's get to it. start and I'll be honest I feel like the last few miniatures I painted weren't exactly great and I was questioning if I should bother with speed paints any longer. Instead of tapping out however I doubled down. I paid a visit to my local hobby store and bought every speed paint that did not come in the army painter speed paint starter set. My bass Aquas decision paid off and in fact my absolute favorite paint now is from the speed paint line but more on that later. I start on the pants with runic gray, careful not to get any paint on the coat, shirt, or boots. With speed paints it's worth going slower and keeping your work as clean as possible. I apply holy white to the shirt next, again careful to keep it off the pants and coat. I chose the pants and shirt first as I feel they'll be the hardest to paint and I want to be done with the base coats for them. While I have holy white already on the brush, I apply it to the aristocrat socks and cuffs. By doing this, it'll save me a little time by reducing the amount of times I need to clean the brush. I paint the coat next, again being mindful of keeping the paint off of the satchel, pants, and especially the holy white painted shirt. If you are new to speed paints, be aware that there is a potential for speed paints to reactivate. If you get speed paint on another speed paint and this occurs, they will blend together and it's not something you can fix by just adding water and wiping it away. Dark wood is one of the new paints I picked up. I love this color and I apply it to the boots, satchel, and the headwear. With the majority of the man with the rake completed, I move on to the aristocrat looking man. Using yet another one of the new speed paints I have just picked up, I apply this color to the boots and to his vestments. This, my dear viewers, is it. This is my newfound, absolute, hands down, without a shadow of a doubt, favorite miniature paint to date. If you are on the fence on if you should pick up any of the Army Painter Speed Paint line, then make or compromise with this one. Try this one, and if you don't like it, forget the rest, but Plasmatic Bolt, in my humble opinion, is worth the risk. The color is fantastic, and I didn't feel like it needed any highlights whatsoever. So wide the divide of contrast it creates for itself. I return to the dark wood that's still on my palette and coat the aristocrat satchel and belt. Previously I stated I like to go back and forth between miniatures when using paints that both share colors, but I did not do so in this instance, as I felt painting the vestment first then the belt and satchel later would be easier than vice versa. I also apply the dark wood to the raised details of the vestment. It's important to note that though I do sometimes experience the issue of speed paint reactivation, I did not experience it when layering dark wood atop sand golem. I am finished with speed paints for now, and with the Army Painter's anti-shine matte varnish, I give the miniatures several light coats, allowing time for each coat to dry before applying the next. I apply oak brown as a base coat for the satchel strap and the man's rake. While the oak brown dries, I apply tiger's eye skin as the base coat for his flesh. Returning to the rake and satchel strap, I apply leather brown as an upper highlight.
I finished the satchel strap and rake highlights with a very narrow upper highlight of Monster Brown. Returning to the flesh, I apply highlights of Jasper skin. I finished the flesh with a smaller highlight of Dorado skin. In previous videos, such as when I painted the Savage Beauty box set by Reaper Miniatures, I added a wash after base coating, followed by four increasingly smaller layers of highlights. I wanted to try just two in this case. I also did not apply any wash as I don't feel there was enough visible flesh to warrant the need for so many layers. With the hardest to reach areas complete, I move on to highlighting the shirt with mummy robes. As the shirt dries, I add a highlight of army green to the coat. As a coat dries, I add a highlight of oak browns, the boot, satchel, and leather coif. I finish the boots with a narrower highlight of leather brown where the light would reflect the most and then also apply this to the coif and the satchel. I finished the coat with a highlight of scaly green and only where the light would reach the most. I finished the shirt with a highlight of matte white and again only where the light would reach the most. Here I bring out another speed paint, this time grim black, and very, very carefully apply it to the man with the rake's beard. With the Army Painter's character brush, I apply matte black to the eye sockets. This will help add depth to the eyes. I follow this with matte white, ensuring that I leave a border of black all around the white. Finishing the eye, I draw a thin vertical line with matte black near the top of the eye to the bottom. I want it to look as if he's looking down at what he's actually raking. With the man and the rake finished, I set about completing in the flesh and highlights on the aristocrat, starting with the highlight of oak brown on the satchel, belt, and dark patterns of the vestments. I finish the satchel, belt, and darker vestment highlights with an edge highlight of monster brown. I apply highlights of desert yellow to the lighter parts of the vestments, particularly on the upper shoulders, the back, and as well as the boots. For the base layer of flesh, I apply Dorado skin. The first flesh highlight is done with Topaz skin. The final flesh highlight is done with ruby skin. I use a speed paint hardened leather for the hair, careful not to let any of it bleed onto the clothing or face. I am especially cautious while painting the sideburns. Again return to the Army Painter's character brush to paint the eyes, starting with matte black for the socket and matte white for the sclera. 
finishing the pupil with a thin line of black down the center. I apply lava orange to the forearm and shoulder patterns of the coat before highlighting them with demonic yellow. This is the finished product, including a quick guide to the paints used for this session. As for lessons learned from painting these miniatures, I think using less layers for the flesh, especially for less important NPCs for a campaign, is more than acceptable, though I'll likely add an additional step of wash after the initial base coat. Also, I think it prudent to remember that I did not experience any reactivation from the sand golem speed paint after applying dark wood over top of it. Honestly, I like the speed paints not included in the starter set significantly more, especially Dark Wood, Sand Golem, and the Glorious Prismatic Bolt. It's going to wrap it up for today. I hope you learned something or were inspired to expand or start your own collection. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And if you like the content of this video, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm Jim with Working With Miniatures, and I'm truly grateful for your time. I bid you a fond farewell. Till the next video.